Williams, good ball fake. Wow. Payne at the top. Fires from long distance and buried the three. Campaign says, I'm a pretty good guard myself. Left side, three on the way. Front of the rim on Payne, but the tomahawk stomp by Williams. Two, it's Sam, throws it up to prayer at the buzzer, and he banks it in! He banks it in from 35 feet at the buzzer! Hi everybody, Dave Winder here on GoRacers.com and this week's Racer Report with head coach Steve Prohm and we are fast approaching the postseason because it's now OVC tournament time as the racers have finished up with 24 consecutive wins to set the OVC record that they set in 2012 of 23. And the racers have also become the fifth team in the Ohio Valley Conference to run the table in the OVC and go undefeated. Just the fifth team to do it and the first in the history, the, the grand history of Murray State Athletics to go undefeated in conference play. So we're here in the race center uh, where Murray State basketball calls home. And we're gonna bring in Coach Prohm in just a moment and talk about the two big wins last week at home against Eastern Illinois, it, and it was senior night, and then the road win Saturday against Tennessee Martin. But first, let's just show you how the OVC tournament is breaking down this week. Wednesday, March the 4th, there's two first round games and it will start at six o'clock between number five seed, Moorhead State, and Southeast Missouri State. And you can see that on the OVC Digital Network. Now the winner of that, and we're, we're looking at the upper part of the bracket here, the winner of that will take on UT Martin, the number four seed, on Thursday, March the 5th, also at six o'clock. And then the winner of that will get the racers on Friday night, March the 6th, the first semifinal game of two that night. And that game will be on ESPNU, and your racers will be playing uh, that night against one of those uh, three teams. And then let's look at the bottom part of the bracket. The second uh, first round game on Wednesday, March the 4th, that's the number six seed Eastern Illinois against the number seven seed SIU Edwardsville. And they'll tip that at eight o'clock on the OVC Digital Network. Now the winner of that game will then get the number three seed Belmont on Thursday, March the 5th at eight o'clock on the OVC Digital Network. And then the winner of that will go into the second semifinal on Friday night, March the 6th. They'll tip it at 8.30, also on ESPNU, as the number two seed, Eastern Kentucky, will be meeting uh, one of those three teams. And then let's go on to Saturday. Hopefully the racers are in this game. It's the championship game of the OVC tournament, Saturday, March the 7th, and we will tip it off at six o'clock, and that will be carried by ESPN2, as we're now ready for the 2015 OVC Basketball Championship. And that'll bring us to our time here in the Race Center with head coach Steve Prohm. He's still smiling. Uh, I, I do that every week because uh, I, I always think back to the 11-12 season when we, it was 23-0. and 0, And now here the racers have broken that record, coach. It's just inc incredible and amazing and uh, really neat. 24 wins in a row after the weekend. Yeah, we've been blessed. Uh, we've been very, very fortunate. And so uh, really proud of our guys. Um, and now we just got to continue to try to push the envelope and see how far we can go. Okay, so we're going to roll the tape now and, and get into uh, what happened last week. We're going to go first with the uh, the game at uh, UT Martin, and uh, man, what an atmosphere! Again, there there wasn't a, there was people ringing around the top of this gym. There were so many people in there. Yeah, we brought a great crowd, a great contingent, probably the most that's ever been over there to Murray. I mean, from Murray over to Martin and. They had a great uh, fraction of people as well, and so it was a great atmosphere. Really tough to hear for us in the first half. That hurt us a little bit. Uh, Coach, you got off to a great start in this one. Uh, you got, guys were, you, you mentioned uh, your press conference today, you, uh, uh, Payne scored right off the first, the first bucket, and then you guys really got some good things going there in the first half. Yeah, we were able to get off to a good start. I think we got up 17 to nine, and then we got a little stagnant though, and uh, Martin did a good job. He came back, I think they took the lead. I think they went on maybe an 11-0 run. Uh, Seymour hits the three there. That was that was a big one too, because I think at that point you you were down maybe six at that point. He had a, hits a big three, and then we uh, we see Cameron hit that uh, shot down the lane. Racers down by four here, and you you guys did trail at the half, but man, you guys were fighting. Yeah, we you know um, you know this this right here. I, I I can't remember. I know Seymour's tied it up. That may have put us up one. Seymour's tied it in the corner at That's twenty, right. I believe. That's right. And, now we're into the second half here, though. Thought first half we weren't we we, we weren't very very good uh, defensively. I thought we got beat up on the glass a little bit offensively. 
Um, you know, he changed defenses. That hurt us a little bit. But second half, what I was proud, our guys came out with a great deal of focus and they were really locked in and we went on a 15-5 run, I think, to open the half. That's right. That one there put the racers up 42-39, about three and a half minutes uh, into the uh, the second half. Jonathan Farrell battled some foul trouble, but I tell you what, this little stretch here, man, he, he made a big impact on the game. Yeah, he's a huge defensive presence. I don't know if he'll get defensive player of the year. You know, we could easily head Sap as well, but he does a lot for us defensively whether it's ball screen defense, rebounding, helping. He does a, you know, if you know our team, he's a big, big piece. Uh, we sent that play into Sports Center's top 10. He didn't make it, but it was on our top 10 for sure. And then Payne hits one deep. Cameron had 31. Jarvis had his 24th career double-double. Just some big plays, Coach, as you guys brought this one home in front of a, a great crowd. And, uh, you know, it felt like a championship game, didn't it? Well, it's just, you know, over there in that type of atmosphere, in that gym, it's like just a good old heavyweight high school. Yeah. Uh, you can hear, it's a packed house, you got teams kind of split, fans are split, you know, uh -huh. it's just not one, you know, we had a great crowd, they had a great crowd, and so it, it's a fun place to play. Uh, Sap hits the big shot there too, and, you know, towards the end here, the racers got on a little bit of run, uh, but when it comes down to it, when you can put the ball in the hands of number one there, that gives you a lot of comfort, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, no question. <laughs> That's an easy answer there. And there's Jarvis making a, a, a move into the paint as the racers are trying to hang on here towards the end. And, you know, rebounding wise, uh, you guys won the boards again. And when you, when you go back and look at the, the first part of the season when you uh, were having trouble on the boards, you guys have really turned that, that whole thing around, haven't you? Yeah, the, um, you know, first half they kicked our tail on the glass. Mm -hmm. And second half, though, we, we did a lot better job. And so uh, if we do play them again, we got to do a better job ball screen defensive coverage. we got to do a better job rebounding. we got to do a better job post defense. Uh, Coach, uh, right now I want to roll the tape uh, just of the, the post game celebration. Okay. Uh, right. just, just tell us a little bit uh, while that's rolling, just a little bit about that. You know, the, the, it was emotional at the, in, in, in the SEMO locker room when you guys clinched, and then, man. It, those guys just, you can just tell they just let it out, didn't they? Well, it's been an emotional couple of weeks. We wanted SEMO to win it. Uh, then we came home and uh, we played P and we got the trophy. And, you know, these guys still haven't cut nets down, so I'm hoping yeah. that's a vision for us down in Nashville. And so, and then we had senior night. And then you follow up senior night with, with being the first team to go here at Murray to ever run the table, to break the winning streak, and then to, you know, be one of only five teams to ever go 16-0 and in conference play. Uh, those guys deserve that moment and, and to enjoy it, and, and they should enjoy it. I mean, this is college basketball. You know, everybody talking about the tournament. Forget the tournament right now. Let these guys enjoy this. This was an unbelievable accomplishment. And during that film there, you noticed, uh, you know, yeah, you're the head coach. You're kind of letting them do their thing and enjoy it, and then they drew you into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's about those guys, yeah. and it's got to be about those guys, and let them have fun. And, you know, if we can just see them as coaches celebrating, laughing, high-fiving, then we're doing our job. Okay, so uh, that made the racers 26 and four. They run the table in the OVC, just the fifth team to do it in 67 years and the first one at Murray <laughs> State. The, the accomplishments are, are just amazing what's been happening. So now let's go back to Thursday night and this was the final regular season home game for the three seniors, TJ Sapp, Jonathan Farrell and Jarvis Williams. Um, of course, we have the uh, ceremony at the start, which we'll, we'll show you a little bit of that when we're done here. The coach, uh, you guys got off to a great start here. It was a 12 nothing at the start here. And, you know, defensively, you just weren't letting them get anything easy. No, we were good defensively and we were up, but we, but we still had opportunity, I think, to be up a little bit more. We mm -hmm. missed some shots, didn't finish some plays that we needed to. And Eastern Illinois does a good job of kind of controlling the clock and, and muddying the game a little bit. And so, um, you know, we we're up 20 to five after being up 12 nothing. And, and like I said earlier, we just, we weren't able to just really, really stretch it out in, in, in segments. So a good uh, rebound and uh, put back there by uh, Wayne Langston. He, he played 17 minutes, got you seven boards and, and four points off the bench. He's been really, really good, getting a lot better. Uh, and then here with about five minutes to go in the half, the racers really, uh, it, was, it was a rather close game, 25-21 here. And you guys ended the half and went up by 13, 34-21. You know, it was, it was good. We got up 13 to go into the half. I think we were as, led as much by 15 maybe, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And so uh, anytime you go into double figures in the locker room is a good thing. Um, but we just could never stretch this out. I think we got as high as 17 in the second half. 
Um, but they came back and, and actually got it to within about seven, I think. Yeah, certainly did. Uh, here's the, the last play of the first half. The racers uh, get a stop uh, and get the tap in there. You love it when a guy hustles down the floor even though he's not supposed to score. Um, and then now we go into the second half, Coach. The racers were just battling here. And, you know, this wasn't particularly the, the, a great shooting night. It was, was, it was the worst shooting night of the year. Yeah, I mean, it was. Uh, I was trying to be nice. Uh, 30, 34%, but you guys, your defense never takes a night off, right? Well, our defense was good. I thought our defense was consistent that night, and that, that really, really helped us on a night where we didn't shoot the ball well. Uh, that was a three-point play for the racers. Now they're up 43-35. Uh, Cameron Payne hits a shot down down the lane. Payne, uh, and the racers didn't shoot it particularly well. Uh, Payne in this ball game, six out of 22. Of course, uh, I think his career high for shots taken is 24, so you know he, he didn't hit a lot of them. But uh, man, the racers just kept doing it. There's there's Wayne, Wayne Langston. Wayne's man. been good for us, man. He's gotten a whole lot better. A great sidestep three right there by TJ. And then uh, Sapp hits the three there. The racers go up again inside to Jarvis Williams. And we remarked too that this was the uh, third time this season the racers wore their gold uh, uniforms at home. So that's been kind of nice. Yeah, really good right there inside, outside. That was good. We went inside, outside, shot fake, moved the ball, Jeff to Sapp. Well, the racers won the game 65-57. Then afterwards, uh, we brought the seniors back out. and. Uh, Coach, you, when you see this stuff here, you just realize how special it is uh, to play here and to, to be part of this. Well, you know, we've started doing this the last couple of years, and it's, it's important. Um, you, you've got to have a complete program, and people have to understand what that means and what that embodies, and we've been trying to do that. Um, Coach, when you, when you just now take, kind of take stock, which I, I guess you can quickly do before this week starts again because it is a new season. Uh, to think back to what, what your guys what your guys have done, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's just, amazing. It's We've been blessed. Amazing, yeah, it? we've been blessed, and uh, you know, God's worked through this team, and it's impacted a lot of different people. You mm -hmm. know, from the feedback I've gotten, and that's terrific, and that's what it's supposed to do. Uh, we have a you know, we have a platform to impact people. Uh, I do, my staff does, my players do, and hopefully, we've done a good job. And you know. This week is what it is. Everybody knows what it is. And so we just got to go well down there, have some fun, play the right way, and you know, and we'll see what happens and not get caught up in all the hype of it. And we hadn't done that all season long. That's right. It's, it's just been a one day at a time. I interviewed Cameron Payne after the game Saturday night, and I was asking him about that. It is a little corny, all those sports cliches we do, but that you guys really have bought into one day at a time. Our guys have been great, um, and my buddy, you know, he coaches for the Wizards, the Washington Wizards, mm -hmm. and he texted me uh, last night late. He said, "Dysfunctional team, ha ha ha." Because uh -huh. then that's what I said. Yeah. I, I'm not. I don't have an ego. We were. We were a dysfunctional yeah. team in October, November. We were. We were terrible yeah. uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, yeah. You know, not everybody. Know, people around our program know. Mm -hmm. You know, it was. You know, it's academics thing here. It's an injury here. It's sickness here. Uh, it's egos here, and we were messed up, and so. We all decided to change, mm -hmm. and the great thing I saw was Jarvis's tweet yesterday that said, when you, when you give a little bit of yourself, it's amazing what the end result can produce. And I changed it a little bit, but to see that come from Jarvis Williams and to see where we were back in October, that's what you want as a coach, and that's what I'm most proud of. Uh, and today, uh, just before we taped our show, we, we found out the ra racers have uh, broken into the Associated Press Top 25 at number 25, and then number 24 in the USA Today coaches poll. That's it's a great honor. Stuff. It's a it's great honor, uh, the writers, to, to, to respect you. But, uh, and this is no slight at the AP, but it's as a coach and as a team, it's mm -hmm. for having the coaches that are in the business every single day rank you. That's even, that's even more um, special. And so the biggest thing we've got to talk to our guys now is let's try to be 23 let's yeah. try to be 21 let's try to be 19 yeah. and don't be satisfied with this um, because it took us for a long time to get this yeah. so don't let anybody take it from you okay well we're looking forward to following the racers down to Nashville on Friday night it's a semifinal game the first one of the evening 630 at Municipal Auditorium in Nashville and uh, we want the whole racer nation to come on down and be part of it so coach uh, congratulations on the regular season good luck in the postseason Thanks so much. Appreciate everybody that came over to Martin, man. It was a great crowd. Get on down to Nashville. You may have to leave a little early because of the weather, but get down there and support us on Friday night. We're going to need you. Okay, Head Coach Steve Prom, Dave Winder here. We'll see you next time on the Racer Report.
It's a handoff to Payne. Curls inside the free throw line, put it off the glass and in. Looks left to Moss, Moss back to Sapp. He's open for three, and it's good. Drives for the alley-oop, caught by Williams. Missed time, he's kind of in jail, but somehow contorts his body and banks it in. 10-9, Murray State, Payne has it to the left sideline. Drives mid-block, threw two defenders, lays it in and drew the foul. Payne comes out with a long pass to Moss, drives in, put it up, hit it, and he drew the foul. How about that? Tap jump pass comes to Payne. Spain steps in for the mid-range jumper and hit it. Tap jump pass to Seymour, catch and shoot three. It's good. Payne gets a clear out, runs in for the floater and hit it from six. He'll now take it inside the free throw line for the floater and he hit another one. Devastating move by Payne, who has 10. To the rim doesn't go. Williams rebounds, goes back up. It's in and out, puts it back up and in. Tap looks down low, Williams. Finds Payne from about 28 feet, and he hit it! Across the stripe, jump pass to Moss, shoots for three to tie it, got it! Right side for Moss to Payne, turn around three, got it, campaign with 18. Racers have tied it at 37. Wants to run the break, fires Sap, Sap inside to Williams, put it up and in, the Racers lead. Comes out with a rebound, wants to run a four on two break, for the alley-oop, stop in, it's good to Williams! Left corner, wide open three, Saps. Front of the rim, no good. Farrell back up and in off the glass. Guy, they give it up to Newell, he drives it, and Farrell blocked it! Sap leads Payne, he drives and puts it in! To Paints, inside, finds Farrell and he stuffed it in! Goes to Langston, finds Payne for three. Good campaign! And it's a nine point lead. Williams, Williams tries to muscle his way in, double pump, up and in! It's a 11 point lead. Suddenly can't make a shot with him on the bench. Payne whips it inside, Langston off the glass and in a great feed from Payne. Anderson knocked away, Payne has the steal and pulls up for the three right wing. God, oh my goodness! To Sam. Sapp drives, baseline jumper, he hit it! T.J. Sapp's first point to the half. The shot clock, five on the shot clock. Payne drives inside for his floater and hit it. 62 to 58, Payne inside, floater rattles in again, 30 for Payne. Gave a little shot fake like he was gonna shoot a three. He feeds Williams down low, gets by his man, put it up and in, Razor's up four. Right side, Payne inside, put it up, no good. Rebound, Williams goes back up and in! And he drew the foul! Folks, history has been made. For the first time ever, the Murray State team has gone wire to wire in the OVC 16-0. The Racer Report with Steve Prohm is brought to you by Ruth Brothers Wine and Spirits, serving you for 50 years with two locations in Paducah, Kentucky and by Pepsi Mid-America. Sign up today at Pepsi.com to earn Pepsi experience points and earn rewards. And by Campus Evolution Villages in Murray, the best in student living. Call 270-767-1818 to plan your tour today. And by Kentucky Community and Technical College System. Higher education begins here.